We're at Sarah 4.0 in Kuching, Malaysia. This is an event focused on shaping Southeast Asia's clean energy future. This year, the Sustainability and Renewable Energy Forum, or SERAF, brought together over 1,000 participants, from government officials to industry leaders, all working to power the region's green energy transition. I think the energy transition um, challenge for the Southeast Asia is quite, quite large. Yeah. Um, the power demand is increasing. By 2050, the power demand will triple. So we have to take all the measures necessary to promote uh, clean energy. A 2019 report by the International Renewable Energy Agency found that renewable energy could supply up to 86% of global electricity by 2050. And here in Asia, solar power is helping to lead the way. We're here to visit a solar panel farm, but not just anyone. This one floats. This is the Batang Ai Floating Solar Farm, Malaysia's largest of its kind. The 50 megawatt facility spans over 190 hectares on the Batang Ai Hydropower Dam. 60 to 70 percent of our generation mix is uh, hydro today, but we're also looking at implementing that and complementing that with uh, solar. Solar and hydro is a very good combination. So when the sun is shining, we can uh, keep the water behind the dam and uh, dispatch uh, power from the solar farm. Uh, when the sun set, then we can use the water from the reservoir to generate power. There are 100,000 solar panels here, and Sarawak Energy says that's enough to power 20,000 households. Almost every component is made in China, from the floaters and inverters to the solar panels themselves. And that's no surprise. Reports say China dominates global solar panel manufacturing, producing more than 80% of the world's supply. But why go floating with solar technology? One of the benefits is that it doesn't compete with uh, land uses on the ground. So you basically just utilize the surface area of the existing reservoir. Yeah. For solar panels, uh, temperature does play a big factor in terms of the energy output. Yeah. So with cooler temperature, it can generate more outputs. Analysts say it's an innovative and cost-effective solution for densely populated regions such as Southeast Asia. And installations like this can build on existing infrastructure to boost efficiency. At the hydroelectric plant, we have all the transmission line, we have the substation here, and we can connect directly into the grid. When this dam was first built in the early 1980s, its construction had forced the relocation of the local community. Experts say large-scale projects like this must also weigh their social and environmental impacts. Whether it's on a lake or land, uh, if it is on the lake, we got to look at the aquatic life and then a, a livelihood of the people in the community nearby. They might rely on the lake and then reservoir that's for their livelihood. So we have to make a, a good assessment of that. If there's an impact, we get to offset this uh, biodiversity uh, impact. Sarawak Energy says it's focused on making the technology work without disrupting the communities around it. In terms of environmental impacts, it's uh, basically very minimal. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't uh, affect any like uh, the people. And in terms of the material use, it's also environmental friendly. According to a report by Precedence Research, the Asia-Pacific region leads the global floating solar industry with a 49% market share in 2024. And it's predicted to be worth over 37 billion US dollars by 2034. This is a technology that makes sense, but it's also a pretty new technology. Yeah. Hydropower has been there forever. Solar is, has been growing quite a lot over the last decades, but floating solar is relatively new. It's one of those technologies that is on its way up. You can see that there's a lot of interest in it. You can see that people are realizing that it makes good sense. Floating solar farms are being installed worldwide in Germany, Thailand, and the largest one in China. One of the good things about floating solar is that it's scalable. You can put it anywhere that you have a reservoir. And that's why we're seeing it grow in Brazil, we're seeing it grow in Europe, in, in, in Portugal, um, and here in the region as well. It's absolutely a, an international uh, technology. The potential for this technology is huge. A 2023 study published in the journal Nature Sustainability found that 
More than 6,000 cities could meet their energy needs using power generated from floating solar alone. By combining solar and hydro, floating panels could be the future of clean energy in Asia, providing a reliable power source for the region, rain or shine.